Whether you're speaking with a prospective customer in person or over the phone, the end goal is always to get the sale. But what happens in between and at the very beginning sometimes can be a big mystery and most people don't know whether they're close to a sale, they're far from a sale, or whether the sale has passed them. In this video module, we're going to be talking about the checkpoints that now you can have to set yourself up for success when you're working with a customer in terms of a live transaction or an over the phone transaction. So with that being said, let's begin. In a sales conversation with a customer, you need to think of the conversation like a straight line. You're going to have the beginning and you're going to have the end. Everything else in the middle is up to you and your customer. And obviously, if you can't get your customer to the end, you don't get the sale. So let's begin with the steps and checkpoints that you need to have in place. The first checkpoint that you need to have in place is the opening. The opening is quite simple. Who are you? What company do you represent? And what the customer's name is? And getting to know your customer a little bit more. For other people, they like to call this the icebreaker. They want to make sure that the customer is comfortable talking to them, providing them with enough information so that way you can talk to your customer on a first name basis and get to know them a little bit more. The second step is fact finding. So with fact finding, you're building onto getting to know your customer. Now that you've talked to them, you got to know their name, you can ask them open ended questions. The key word here is open ended questions about the situation that they're in. Why are they looking to make a change? Who have they used in the past? How was the experience when they use that person? Where are they at in the transaction? Are there going to be any other people who are involved in this decision that they're going to make with you? And why have they chosen to use your company? These are some of the questions that you need to ask your customer to understand them even more. If you fail to ask any of these questions at this point in time or fail to get enough information from your customer at this point in time, you're going to fail. And the reason why you're going to fail is because during the fact finding stage, you're going to find out all the objection handlers that you'll need. You're going to find out your customer's motives. You're going to find out your customer's wants. You're going to find out your customer's fears. And you can play that to your advantage to get the sale. Because here's the thing, at the very beginning, their guards are typically lower than at the very end when they know that you're going to go in for the close, that they know that you're going to go in and ask them for money. At the beginning, you're just getting to know them. And this is the perfect time to get to know them efficiently and effectively. The third checkpoint that you have in terms of a sales transaction is labeling your customer. So what does it mean to label your customer? Well, at this point in time, we've now talked to the customer. We've now understood their problem. We now understand what they're looking to achieve. So the next step is logically, we need to reiterate to the customer, Mr. Customer, based on the information that you've told me, I want to make sure that we both understand that your problem is X. We're labeling them with a problem. If they say that they don't have a problem, then we can flip it and say, okay, Mr. Customer, based on the information that you provided me, I want to make sure that your end goal is X. Remember, people either move away from the problem that they want to avoid or they move closer to an end goal that they want. Never position it as, I think I know what you want, but rather a position of where the customer is and get them to reiterate and agree with you as to where they are in the transaction. Now that we've labeled your customer, the next step logically is to present our product. And this is where most people get the transaction wrong. They'd rather present the product and then label the customer afterwards. If you do that, the customer is going to get mixed up and they're not going to know why you're presenting the product. So before you present your product, remember, label your customer with a problem. Okay. So now that we're presenting the product, the ideal way to present your product to the customer is tying it back into their problem, tying it back into the end goal that they want to achieve, making it about your customer. Because at the end of the day, we're not here to present our customer with a brochure that we've memorized. We're not here to tell the customer all these great things that we know about our product and service. They know we know great things. We are the sales specialist. We're here to present a solution that makes sense for the customer. And the only way for it to make sense for the customer is if we know their problem. If, if we've gone through the rapport building stage and we've labeled them with a problem or we've labeled them with an end goal that they want to achieve. So again, your product presentation is solely reliant on getting to know your customer. So make sure before you present your product, you know everything that you could possibly know about your customer. Spend the most time getting to know your customer, guys. I'm really reiterating on this because your product presentation, all it takes is for you to understand what your customer's problems are and your product knowledge ties into it to provide them with that solution and it's smooth sailing from there. Once you've presented the product to your customer, obviously the next step is your customer is going to ask you, well, what does this all cost? One of the bigger problems that most salespeople face when presenting their price point to a customer is they get scared. They go, it costs like $300 a week, I think. And the customer loses confidence. You can go through an entire sales transaction and be confident in the end goal, be confident in wanting to do a purchase and you're like, yo, let's go, let's do this. But the salesperson looks at you and goes, it's like $4,000. It's a lot of money. The second you do that as a sales professional, when you stiffen up and you're not confident about your price point, guess what happens to your customer? They lose confidence in the ability for you to service them once they've said yes to your product. And when that happens, the probability of them saying yes to you astronomically drops and you might even lose the sale. So when talking about your product, make sure you've already rehearsed and practiced the ability to talk about your price point. Don't be afraid to talk about your price point. And guys, if you're not sold on the price point just yet, be sold on it. Think about the service that you're providing your customer. Think about the end goal that you're providing the customer. Think about all the values you're providing them. What you charge is a fraction of the positive things that they'll get. 
And if that doesn't convince you about your price point, you need to practice talking about your price point. Sales managers, if you're watching this video, make sure you go to your sales team every single day. What's the price of this? What's the price of that? How much will this cost? How much will that cost? Get them comfortable talking about the price point. Get them comfortable talking about numbers because the more they're exposed to the ability to talk about the numbers, the easier it is when they start talking about said numbers to those customers. So now that we've presented numbers to our customers, we've gotten to know them, we know their problems, we know their end goals, we're ready to ask for the sale, right? Wrong, we don't wanna ask for the sale right away. So how do we make sure that we have the right customer that's ready to make a purchase today without having to embarrass ourselves by saying, you wanna buy it? Well, it's easy. We wanna do a trial close. So what is a trial close? A trial close is a set of miniature closes and if it goes the wrong way, you can go back to your presentation and find out what's wrong with the customer and why they're not buying today. So a trial close looks like this. Mr. Customer, based on the information that you've received today, does it seem like our product is able to solve the problem that you're looking for? If the answer is yes, go in for the close. Another question that you can ask the customer is, Mr. Customer, based on the information we provided you today on a scale of one to 10, one obviously being that it's not the right fit for you and 10 being it's the exact fit for you and the only thing we need to discuss today is how you're gonna be taking delivery of the product that we have or when you wanna start the project, where do you think you stand? Allow the customer to provide you with an answer between one to 10. If it's anything under an eight, ask them, what can we do to bring it to a 10? If it's eight to 10, that means the customer's on the tipping point. All you have to do now is assume the sale. Okay, Mr. Customer, if you think you're sure, we can set a deposit aside right now. We accept Visa or MasterCard. How would you like to pay? If they're absolutely sure and they really wanna do business with you, they'll choose one of the two. If they're not sure from there, they'll be hesitant. And that's when you're bringing your objection handlers in place that you got from the conversation that you had with them when you got to know your customer. Again, getting to know your customer is the key to all your future problems. Now, when we think about all of these things as a whole, that actually puts us at the close. Once we've gone through that entire process, the customer should be saying yes to us. However, the world is not always sunshine and rainbows. There's going to be objections in place, like I mentioned earlier. And in order for you to overcome said objections, you need to look at the very beginning of the transaction. This is a quick note for all salespeople and sales managers. When you're talking to a customer, 90% of the transaction should be getting to know your customer. The 10% should be towards the presentation and the rest should flow like gravy. If you're not getting to know your customer, if you don't know the problems that they have, if you don't know the solutions that they're looking to achieve, if you don't know who they use in the past and why they don't like them anymore and why it hasn't been successful and what's holding them back from making a decision now as opposed to three months ago, three years ago, whatever it may be, how do you expect to close the sale? And with that being said, guys, those are the steps to having a successful sales transaction. Again, we want to start off at the very beginning and we want to go through a straight line with said checkpoints and get to the end of the transaction, which is a sale.